students often complain to me uh, when, when taking 240 that this differential equation section uh, is not very intuitive. And, and they hate it because it seems like we're just guessing. And, and the problem is that we are guessing. Uh, and this, this, this section, 8.3, is called annihilators, but really what it should be called is it should be called uh, how to guess good. All right. Uh, not to be confused with how to English good, but uh, yeah, so this is, this is how to guess good. That's really what this chapter is. And over here on the left-hand side, you can see uh, I have this table on page 524 of the textbook uh, that you'll see. And essentially, uh, in fancy terms, uh, to confuse just, just confuse all of the students because that's what textbooks really like to do, uh, they essentially tell you how to guess everything. And so let's go through then uh, this table and let's just look at examples then of how to guess solutions to differential equations. So first of all, let's, let's, let's look at the following equation, right? Let's look at uh, y double prime plus 5y prime plus 6y is equal to 24t, uh, e to the t, all right? And so this, this, this can be written, right? We usually write this then as d squared plus 4 uh, 5d, whoops, uh, plus 6 apply to y is equal to 24e to the t. Okay, and so what is this mumbo jumbo uh, that we have over here? So the book likes to say this is p of d, right? It, it's some polynomial where your differential operator d is the is the unknown, or it's treated as like the x you can think of. So instead of a polynomial in x. Uh, like x squared plus 2x plus 7, uh, we have a polynomial in d. So it's d squared plus 5d plus 6, all right? So then this is pd applied to y, okay? So that's where the y comes from. And then the right-hand side is f of x. So over here, when we see uh, the f of x, right, this, uh, this is actually this f of x uh, on the right-hand side, okay? So f of x is the right-hand side. And so that's what this mumbo jumbo is. So, all right, uh, so what do we have here then? What we have here is that f of x in our case is equal to 24e to the t. So that means we have this situation right here. We have c e to the ax, where c is equal to 24, little a is equal to one, and okay, instead of x, it's, it's f of t, right? So in this case, we really have like f of t Right, because this is a t. Um, if this guy were an x instead, then this would be f of x. But in this case, we have f of t. All right, and so f of t, I should say, is equal to 24e to the t. So c is equal to 24, a is equal to 1. All right, and now if p of a is not equal to 0, so what does that mean? It just means that if it just means that take this guy right here and hope that 1 is not a root. Right? Mm -hmm. And we can see easily that 1 is not a root of d squared plus 5d plus 6. In fact, uh, only the, the only roots of d squared plus 5d plus 6 are going to be negative 2 and negative 3, which is not 1. And so then it tells us that we guess, our special guess is y p of x is equal to some constant times uh, a naught e to the ax. So before we get there, what are the steps we need to do? Step 1 is to solve the homogeneous, right? Why is that? Well, because these type of problems uh, usually pr are prefaced with uh, find the general solution. And so what is the general solution? The general solution is y, right, is equal to yc plus yp, all right? And yc is a solution to the homogeneous. So let me do some more color coding, yc, all right, and then let's say plus yp, all right? And so let's keep it in yellow, all right? And so to solve the homogeneous, we get y double prime plus 5y prime plus 6y is equal to 0, okay? So for now, we just completely ignore the right-hand side. We set it equal to 0. And so you get then, this is what, d squared plus 5d plus 6 apply to y, forgot to calibrate my pen, and then this is d plus 2, d plus 3, okay? d is equal to negative 2, negative 3, and so now you get yc 
is equal to uh, yc is equal to c1 e to the negative 2t plus c2 e to the negative 3t. All right, and this is yc. This is yc is the solution to the homogeneous. All right. Now the second step is now we guess yp. All right. So the, to find overall homogeneous solution, which is just y, we now we need to find what yp is. And so now the book over here on the left hand side, right, it tells me that yp is a naught uh, e to the e e to the ax. Uh, so in our case, then. I'm gonna say yp is equal to just big A, which is some constant, times e to the one t. All right, a t is one t. So this is my guess for yp. All right, and then what do we have to do? Well, we have to take the derivatives. So yp prime is just simply a e to the t, and yp double prime is gonna be a e to the t. All right, and now what's the next step? Uh, the next step, step three, is to plug yp uh, into uh, the original equation and solve for uh, solve for a for your constants okay so we plug in yp into the equation and and what is it well y double prime is so we have y double prime plus y five y prime plus uh six y is equal to 20 25 4 e to the t hopefully that was right it is okay and so now y double prime uh we plug yp in here so this is a e to the t plus 5 a e to the t plus 6 a e to the t is equal to 24 e to the t okay and that's because y double prime y prime and y were all a e to the t and now solving for a, I see that 12 a e to the t is equal to 24 e to the t, and a is going to be equal to two. And so step three, uh, step four, then is to put the solution together. And again, y is equal to y c plus y p, and so y then is equal to c one e to the negative two t plus c two e to the negative three t plus uh, a, which is two. And then so this becomes 2e to the t, right? Since my guess was yp is a e to the t, and then we solve for a being 2. And so my particular solution is 2e to the t. All right, so it's a four-step process. And step two, the book then tells you what to guess. And now well, let's look at another example. So let's look at another example. And now let's say I have y double prime, uh, let's see, plus uh, let's say 2y prime plus 9y is equal to t, all right? And so how do we, uh, how do we go about uh, this problem? Okay, so now, uh, so step one is always to solve the homogeneous, right? And, and, and this one is a bit more complicated. So now you get y double prime plus 2y prime plus 9y is equal to 0, okay? And then this gets me uh, negative, so d squared plus 2d plus 9, apply to y is equal to 0, so you get negative 2 plus or minus uh, the square root of 4 minus 4ac, which is 36, all over 2a. And so this is now equal to, uh, da, 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 da. What's this is equal to this is like negative one plus uh, or minus for two root two i is that what it is plus or minus two root two i it is okay and okay so uh, so let's say i two root two let's put the i right there okay. And now what? So now your homogeneous uh, yc is equal to, and let's color code it in the blue like we did above, yc is equal to, uh, this becomes c1, all right, uh, e to the negative t, right, because that's where the negative one goes, okay, c1 e to the negative t, and then this becomes uh, cosine 2 root 2, 
t, all right, plus c2 e to the negative t sine 2 root 2t, okay? And now what? Now step two is to guess yp. And so how do we do that? Well, okay, we see our right-hand side is t, all right? And if we look over here, uh, that doesn't look to seem any look like anything that can match. However, there is. It's this guy right here. C x to the k. And so what happens? Well, essentially, c is equal to one. All right, and then x is equal to t, which is which has always been the case. And then k is equal to one. All right. So we take this guy and we say c is equal to one, k is equal to one. All right. What's next? Is p of zero zero? If I plug in zero into this equation here, do I get zero? Or in, into just here, right? Because this part is p of d. And do I, if I plug in d equals zero, I get nine, right? Zero squared plus two times zero plus nine is nine, so it's not zero. Okay, that's good. So then that tells me that I guess y p of x is equal to a naught plus a one x plus blah, 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 plus a k x to the k. What? Well, since k is 1, we see that yp is going to be equal to a0 plus a1x, right? Because, because since k is 1, this becomes a1x to the 1, which is simply just a1x. So the, so the only term we have to run up to then is a1x, okay? And so that's what we're going to guess yp is equal to being. So yp prime is simply just a1. And then yp double prime is 0. All right. Now remember step 3. Step 3 is to uh, plug into uh, the original and solve for constants. All right. So now I get y double prime plus 2y prime plus 9y was equal to t. All right. So now y double prime is 0 plus 2 times a1 plus 9 times a0 plus a1t, this, right, because it shouldn't be x, it should be t. Ugh, this is why I hate x and t's. Uh, they're essentially going to be the same thing, uh, is equal to t. And so I get, what I get, at 11, oof. I get 2a1 plus 9a0 plus a1, 9a1t is equal to t. So that tells me that a1 has to equal 1 9th, all right? But what, what, what does that tell me? Then I also know that the sum of my not t terms has to equal zero, right? Because this is equal to t plus zero. And so I know a1 is equal to 1 9th because the only t term here right, is t, so then 9a1 has to equal 1, so a1 is equal to 1 9th, okay, and then this guy has to be 0, so now I get 2 times 1 9th plus 9a0 is equal to 0, and get 2 9th plus 9a0 is equal to 0, so this looks like a0 is equal to negative 2 over 81. All right, and so now we see that yp is going to be equal to negative 2 over 81 plus 1 ninth uh, t, okay? Because again, oops, yp is equal to a0 plus a1t, and then we found a0 is negative 2 over 81, and yp is equal to 1 over 9th t. And so finally step four, again, is piecing, piecing together. So we see that y is going to be equal to c1 e to the negative t cosine 2 root 2t plus c2 e to the negative t sine 2 root 2t plus, well, this is actually minus 2 over 81 plus 1 ninth t. Okay, and so that's going to be uh, how we do this. So in general, uh, the step I'm going to skip for now is going to be this guy and it's going to be uh, it's going to be this guy and and so we'll actually cover these guys in a separate video with complex valued 
uh, trial solution. So that, that happens when the right hand side, so remember f of x, f of, f of t or f of x is the right hand side. Um, when the right hand side has a sine or cosine term inside, that's when we uh, have to use complex values and it, it gets really messy. So that's why we're not going to cover in this video. So hopefully this makes sense. Uh, the method of annihilators, again, is just refined guessing. And again, this isn't this, this sh in no means should be intuitive. And definitely uh, more practice is the way to go for uh, these types of problems.